<laughs> All right, so the, the idea here, I was going to point out that it's actually useful for the cystic fibrosis stuff, but it is. that's, yeah. Mm. Okay, so the idea here is uh, basically this polypholobionts and microbial maps idea. Okay. And so the, the, the beginning is about 2002, I guess, when we started the, um, well, no, I guess that's more like 2000, where we started um, looking at the coral, uh, uh, a coral and looking at the microbes on it. And then what was going on at the time is Nancy Knowlton had in the 90s uh, published these papers about the zooxanthellian corals, right? And what she'd shown is that there were different zooxanthellae that uh, lived in different, ten uh, sorry, light regimes. Okay? So if you took a coral and you moved it from like deep up to, uh, to high light, they would change the zooxanthellae. Okay. The idea there is that they can be adaptable. So by changing zooxanthellae, the animal can be adaptable to live in different regimes. Okay. And so what, um, uh, when I was in Peruk's lab and with Nancy, and, um, is we went down and we would get the, uh, we got the corals, and then what we were looking for is um, examples of where there's adaption by the, the microbes to different environmental conditions. And we call that the holobiont. And um, the holobiont, the name may have come from either we invented it or we stole it from uh, uh, Lynn Margulis. We're not exactly sure because she also said it at some point. Um, and since we've all read those books, if nothing else, we <laughs> may have picked it up from there. <laughs> all right. So the idea here, and this is uh, goes into humans nowadays, right, is that you've just got these complexes of, um, of bacteria, animal, uh, archaea, fungi, and so forth that make an uh, ecological unit. Okay? And that these are probably uh, adaptable by changing components. And in particular, it looks like horizontal gene transfer is the main driver here. Okay? So what you'll see, uh, what it really looks like, is that if you look at a coral at the 60s level, and you look at the same coral all over the place, for the most part, you find that it has the same types of bacteria associated with it. And that's true of our gut also and, other, and many other systems. But then if you look at the genes that are living on top of that background, okay, they'll be adjustable or they're different in different places. And that seems to be where that, that variation is coming in. Okay? And what we know is that on something like a coral reef, um, what you've got is you've got uh, these things competing for space on the bottom, right, on the benthos. Okay? And then, of course, we think that anthropogenic uh, stressors are changing these relationships. Okay. So this is, uh, this is just the visual. Um, if you're not so familiar, um, the coral animal, remember, has, uh, um, is an Idarian, these are basically some of the oldest animals on the planet, um, or extant animals on the planet, and they form the symbiosis with the zooxanthellae, which are a modified dinoflagellate, okay? And then all over this surface, there's about 10 to the 8, let's say, uh, uh, microbes per square centimeter on there, and about 10 to the 10th uh, uh, viruses per square centimeter, is that right? Something in that region. There's a lot of viruses stuck down there. And then, of course, there's all these um, protists, which are essentially unknown, and they're, they're spectacular. Um, and if you look at Ian Johnston's uh, paper or poster up in the thing, it's really cool, like all these guys. These guys look to be specific to parietes, uh, uh, species, for example. And then inside are actually these crazy uh, algae that are called endolithic algae, and they actually live in the skeleton below the animal, and they're still able to get enough light to do photosynthesis, right? So these are also very cool. All right, so the idea here is that you have this thing that, uh, this association that's going to change with environment and with stressors. And Linda is the one that did um, really the first real version of this um, to get us past the 16S. And what she did is she took a, a technique that had been worked out by a DeLong's uh, sorry, lab to uh, look at sponges. So he had actually got uh, crinarchiotes out of sponges by using a percol gradient, separating it that way. <coughs> so uh, Linda did the same thing, and um, 
what she ended up with were these two fractions, which uh, are your microbiome with your viruses effectively, and then kind of your eukaryotic cells down here. It's not a perfect technique, but it's pretty good. Okay. And um, then she took that DNA, and this is a uh, genoma feed, and then this is back in you know the early days of pyrosequencing. So these will be 100 base pair fragments. And what she find, or what she found, is that not surprisingly, I think, is that uh, the, the coral associated bacteria are primarily heterotrophs, right? So they're just things are sitting there eating probably the mucus. Okay? And if you look at Melissa Garrett's and kind of like how we've always envisioned this, so the dirty truth is, is that if you go in and you look at the surface of a coral, it's very hard to see those microbes. Right? So we don't, they look very clean on the surface. That's also Ian Johnson has a paper from like 2007 that shows this. And, and nobody's been able, so we've always kind of envisioned if, if the coral's sitting here, then you put up this mucus layer and then the, they're probably just zipping around here. Does that make sense? Uh, as opposed to being really attached in any real sense of the word. And um, that's what Melissa's uh, guarantees. Um, paper with uh, fruit slab uh, using confocal shows. <coughs> if you look at the gene content, what, it's, what it looks like is this community for predominantly is eating carbos and proteins. Okay? And what they've got is they've got the enzymes for chewing them up with peptidases or these transferases and so forth, and then moving them into the cell and then digesting them inside. Okay? They don't seem to eat the lipids, and really weirdly for marine microbes, they don't seem to like amino acids, right? There's no real clear uh, amino acid transport in, in these systems. What about vitamins and stuff like that? What was that? What about vitamins and stuff like that? So for vitamins and stuff, um, there actually are a number of things, about a number of vitamins that they're producing. I don't know about uptake Sometimes. of vitamins particularly, but I do remember there's B12 uh, synthesis and stuff in there. So this is kind of the overview, that metagenomic overview of what that system looks like. Okay. All right, the other thing that uh, pops out of this is probably, um, uh, so uh, a byproduct of that, uh, uh, that methodology, which I think uh, uh, um, we're seeing a lot, is that if you separate these guys, you get the mitochondria, so for example, she got the full mitochondria of the, of the coral when she did the uh, experiment, which is kind of cool. And the other thing is, is actually there were a whole bunch of uh, uh, fungi in there. And these were probably spores that survived this, this uh, process, to tell you the truth. Okay, so we think that, and if we took the uh, fungi, they um, basically, you get this kind of cool uh, view of basically a whole bunch of all three domains of life, including and, and the fungi, which is uh, yeah, working together let's say, <coughs> to do certain things in the um, holobiont. So the idea here is that there's uh, nitrogen fixation by cyanobacteria, which we see we saw way back in the 2002 paper, and then there have been follow-up studies by Falkowski and Lesser's group. Okay? And then what they did, um, these guys would basically provide ammonia or something equivalent thereof to the system, which then in a second set of studies, there's a nitrification reaction, which is carried out by Cronarchioda. And this is uh, really uh, by Chris Francis's uh, uh, group up at, um, at Stanford, uh, had used some of uh, Linda's samples to get to there. And then from here, Instead of going into the normal denitrification cycle, which is kind of how we would think about it, there's actually none of the genes for that. It looks like what's going on is that the fungi take the nitrate-nitrate uh, nitrate ammonification reaction and put it back here in this part of the system. Okay? So what this does is it means that you basically recycle nitrogen. And then Kushmora's group just recently uh, basically showed that they can get different nitrification and, and probably denitrification by increasing the uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, nitrogen coming into the system. So they just treat it with it. So that looks like the holobiont adjusting. Do you guys see that? Right? Okay. Yes, sir. Do you think your lack of denitrification is a result of reduced anaerobic anoxic zones? 
It could be. But there are, it, and it could just be washed out. Though yeah. what tends to wash out of this system is uh, actually ammonia. That's what you see tending to come off a coral, for example. It's yeah. not completely true, yeah. okay? But yes, there's a lot of cool chemistry here, but um, that's about what we know at this point. And the other thing is, is uh, I think in Pushmore's study, and uh, there's actually a switch. So these were Crinarchaeota that were the only thing that we really found. Um, in his system, when you pushed it, it I, if I remember correctly, it switched from archaea to bacteria. All right, is that good? So that's, that's probably some of the best evidence that the, that the holobiont isn't just a stable thing, it's just that you just have certain bacteria associated with you, but that it's adjustable. Okay? The other idea, though, I, I'm not exactly sure if this is 100% true, but um, uh, uh, from Katie's stuff, Basically what she did is she was looking at uh, coral algal fights uh, going on. And so these are Montastria um, 16S's, right? And um, so what you see is that, uh, I probably didn't say this before, corals have, uh, based on the 16S, let's say two, 100 to 200 unique microbes per coral species out there. So if you take asteroids,